Hello, good morning to all of you. So uh, we were discussing about the basis set, and basis set you know is the linear combination of uh, uh, some of the basis functions, and basis functions can be uh, anything. Uh, so anything mathematical functions. So uh, we have discussed uh, that uh, the type of basis functions, what type of basis function we can use. So uh, in the last lecture we have discussed that one. Uh, types the Slater type functions which is developed by John Slater and uh, uh, this was actually uh, coming from the concept of the hydrogenic atomic orbital actually which has the dependency of e to the power minus uh, r okay where r is the distance from the nucleus so this is exponential uh, at, uh, minus r uh, dependency uh, uh, type of basis functions but what we have seen uh, there that these functions are actually uh, able to replicate the shape of the orbitals but the problem is that it cannot uh, analytically calculate the integral uh, for uh, which arises during the our sol uh, solutions of the Hartree-Fock equation. So uh, this was uh, uh, a severe this uh, was a great problem because uh, uh, we have to uh, take the numerical integrations and that will take too much time. So uh, though we will get the accuracy uh, using Slater type of orbital use, uh, but it has, uh, it will require too much time. Okay, So we have to compromise between the accuracy and time always in these calculations. So we will proceed uh, uh, one next uh, other type of functions and that is uh, called Gaussian type of functions. This is an alternative of STOs and it is uh, nothing but there is differences only that STO was the uh, dependence on the e to the power minus r but it is depends on e to the power minus r square. Okay. So this atomic orbital like basis functions that is e to the power minus r now changed to Gaussian type functions that is e to the power minus r, r square. Sorry. Okay, so uh, in this uh, form of this functional uh, basis set, what basis sets uh, generates that uh, that uh, if you use that, that uh, your uh, calculations will be easily easy. Okay, so uh, this is the form general form of the basis functions. You don't uh, remember all these things, but only remember that it depends on e to the power minus alpha x square y plus y square plus z square, where alpha is the exponent. Controlling the width of GTO means that uh, how much width of uh, your orbital will be, and i, j, k are non negative integers, and that is coming from the uh, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so in particular, uh, if uh, if all these three indices are zero, then uh, you will get an S type of orbitals, means you uh, your uh, orbital will have the spherical symmetry, or GTO will have the spherical symmetry, means that it's a S type GTO. But uh, uh, there are three possible choices for which uh, index is 1, means x can be 1 or y can be 1 or z can be 1. That will reflect the uh, type of px, py and pz orbitals. So, where, uh, when the sum of these indices is equal to 2, the orbital will be d type GTOs and uh, thus for f type uh, GTOs indices from the will be 3. Okay. So, uh, uh, we are now actually uh, shifting from the Slater type orbitals to uh, the Gaussian type orbitals and we have uh, seen that if we use Gaussian type orbitals our calculations will be very much faster. Now it is not true that these Gaussian type functions are uh, have no drawback. It has also drawback uh, because you have seen that Slater type orbitals has a, uh, is a cusp means that it can actually fall very sharply when we go beyond from the nucleus that is this the nucleus and we are going from the nucleus then uh, the orbital uh, the density of the electrons actually becoming uh, decrease very sharply okay but in the gaussian type uh, orbitals which is uh, the dotted line you can see that uh, there are uh, it is not actually decreasing so sharply but it actually uh, becoming zero before uh, a long uh, ago of the uh, Slater type orbitals, long before of the Slater type orbitals. Okay, so uh, as we are getting this Slater type orbitals, we, uh, is coming from the hydrogenic type orbital, which is the prototype that hydrogen atom. 
but gaussian type orbitals are now uh, not able to replicate uh, this behavior so our electron density should be uh, within this plot uh, within this uh, uh, bold line but we are getting now the uh, dotted line okay so the, you can see the area area is much different so this is a, a huge drawback in the gto's okay so we can also solve this issue uh, by uh, taking the combinations of uh, so many go a few gaussians okay so the most possible remedy to maintain uh, both the computational efficiency and accuracy actually our target is like that we need to uh, be uh, some uh, efficient calculations which will be uh, fast and also the results will be accurate okay so that can be obtained uh, by uh, using linear combinations of gto's means that we will uh, will not use a single gto we will uh, use uh, a linear combinations of multiple gto's and in this form where c you know this is linear combination where c is the coefficient and here m is the number of gaussians means m can be uh, 2 3 4 5 6 anything okay so what we have seen that if we uh, take a linear combination of gaussian functions that can able to replicate actually sto type orbitals okay so uh, when a basis function is defined as a linear combination of gaussian it is actually uh, said that this is as contracted gaussian functions a contracted basis functions okay and indiv uh, individual uh, gaussians uh, from uh, it is formed means that the total uh, uh, functions like we can take uh, m is equal to 3 so there will be three three gaussians are linearly combined so this uh, total functions will uh, will be said as contracted for uh, functions basis functions and the individual functions uh, of like that one two three three gaussians you have taken all these three functions will be called the primitive functions or primitive Gaussians. So thus in the basis set of contracted GTOs, each basis function is defined by contracted uh, contraction coefficient that is C and an exponent uh, alpha for each primitives. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, how many uh, basis functions will actually, how many uh, primitive Gaussians will use to uh, form the contracted functions that will be able to replicate the STOs? That is the important things now to consider. So, here, uh, Popel, Hare, and Stuart, uh, Stuart were first systematically determine optimal contraction coefficients and exponents to mimic STOs with contracted gtos for large number of atoms okay so if you want to uh, get more advanced knowledge so you can uh, read the popel's literature and they used uh, uh, tried so uh, uh, so many combinations uh, and they uh, actually wants to mimic the stos using these gtos so they have developed sto mg type uh, basis set where mg a, a sto is the the it's uh, actually slater type orbital mg means that m is the number of gaussians okay so if we say that sto 3g means there are three gaussians linearly combined to replicate the stos okay so uh, the more the more primitives you is you will use means that number of gaussians uh, more gaussians you will uh, linearly combined your uh, you will get more uh, contract uh, accurate contracted functions and that can be uh, made match uh, match a given sto okay so it was found that uh, the optimum optimum combination of speed and accuracy when comparing to calculations using STOs was achieved when m is equal to 3. So STO 3G basis. It actually uh, if we combine linearly 3 Gaussian type orbitals and uh, it form a contracted function phi and that is actually able to replicate the STOs. So when you will uh, uh, do perform uh, in the lab, you will uh, use this type of basis set. This is actually Gaussian basis set, but we are actually uh, have seen that this can replicate the Slater type orbitals. So we uh, are getting actually accuracy for of the Slater type orbitals, and also we are now getting uh, computationally fast calculation. Okay. So here is a graphical form of STO uh, uh, comparison of the STO and uh, Gaussian. 
so you can see if we uh, this is the bold line bold line is actually replicates the st sto function so if you use only one sto one g then uh, you will get this dotted line so your electron density are within this area only okay so this is far from uh, uh, from the sto so this uh, the error will be very high because it cannot replicate the electron density properly so if you take sto 2g means that you can uh, combine two gaussian functions then you will get the area of electron density by uh, covered by this graph that is this dotted line you can see but still uh, it's far away from this sto types so still it's also uh, not uh, the sufficient to replicate the sto and if you take the combination of three then you can see this uh, dotted line which is almost matched with the uh, bold line of the sto okay so you can see that sto 3g is actually able to replicate the electron density almost uh, similar to like to sto okay so we can uh, now say that sto 3g is a combination uh, which can actually uh, replicate properly the stellar type orbital so we'll get now uh, efficient calculations with accuracy but gaussian functions have another uh, feature that actually very problematic that you uh, know when we have discussed in the hydrogenic atomic orbital that hydrogen atom orbital has or all orbitals or wave function has nodes okay so all the ground state has no node and the first excited is one node and second excited two nodes like that so if you consider 2s orbital it must have one node but as this uh, function is actually depends on the power minus r square so whatever r you can put uh, it will not change the sign okay so uh, it will not actually ex uh, explain the nodal behavior and that is a big a big problem but we can solve that issue by using uh, the comb uh, using the combinations here that is the uh, by using the coefficient c alpha uh, by as a different uh, sign okay so if we use uh, this sign as a uh, coefficient as a minus then it will give you the total function as minus and if it's plus then total function will be plus okay so uh, i the changing the coefficient sign uh, contraction coefficient c is sign that given in equation 5 we can uh, have a choice of either positive or negative and thus we can fit the uh, the functions which will have the uh, radial nodal behavior okay so in this way the two problems of the gaussians can be solved by one is by combining linearly a few gaussians to replicate sto another is by changing the sign of uh, the coefficients of the primitives to uh, to uh, actually replicate the nodal behavior of the orbitals okay so uh, this is the uh, up to the type of functions mainly gaussian type functions are used in main uh, many uh, quantum chemistry programs and we will also use the gaussian type of uh, uh, Gaussian type of basis set. Okay, so in the next uh, lecture, we'll discuss about that how many uh, basis functions will be in a basis set and how we can count them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.